This is off planet radio. So everything is being brought to light. The consciousness war. Every person has a harmonic to themselves, and every person is working on individual strands of our own being. Yet nothing is always black and white. There's a huge spectrum out there that must and needs to be explored. And I did not clarify that it was a simulation, that the super soldier thing, this black ops, these secret programs are a simulation. And this is the thing people need to understand. We carry generational DNA and trauma. It's encoded in our DNA. And it's our choice to heal it or not. This is one of the main things that people need to hear right now. That humanity needs to heal. You're going to sit back, repeat the same pattern, and the sheer definition of insanity? Or are you going to dig deep? And yes, it's going to be painful. Oh, it's going to... It will be worth it because you will clear it, you will heal from it, and you will come out a different, happy, renewed, healed person and have a new life and a new generation that's going to heal this world and make a difference. All these souls coming in now are coming in to a different energy than what we had over the previous generations. This gateway is opened up. Humanity cannot grasp the fact of the technology they have. The black sheep, they have all the gifts. They're empaths, they're usually psychic or uh, clear, clear cognizant. As we go into 2020, you know, 2020 vision, in the eye of the vision, needle, yes. we're threading into a very narrow constriction. Yeah, and the same, they, everyone needs to know that they can do it, that they can come out on top. It's going to be okay. And they, don't, they do not need to throw themselves through a psychosis. Lindsay Hooper is a veteran conference presenter and speaker in the field of mind control targeted individuals in ascension. She is an experiencer, survivor, and chronicler of the paranormal and deep state programs. She is also a keen observer of the human spirit and the evolution of consciousness in the 21st century. She joins us from her home on the Atlanta Soleil Lines in coastal North Carolina to have a conversation we have planned for over 10 months, literally since she went into solitude to gestate her newborn daughter. This conversation has much to do with generations, healing, confronting our own inner traumas, and the hope that awaits on the other side of transformation. And today, we welcome Lindsay Hooper to Off Planet Radio. So, were you and I kind of connected, it was, well, it was nine months ago that we planned this, and literally a gestation period, you... Definitely. <laughs> you, had, you actually went through a physical birth cycle, you went through gestation and birth. When, when we last talked, you know, we agreed that um, after the birth of your child, we would do this. And it was like this appointed time that um, just everything just stacked up. So, like, we're recording this, but we're putting this out. This will go out on 11-11-19 uh, to the public. And there's all kinds of, the 11-11 thing is kind of this thing that's rift in and out of consciousness for a lot of people for years now. One of the Correct. That... And, and if I can interject, yeah. it's also the drifting in and out of consciousness activated by so many different portals going on since the beginning of time. And the most recent one, um, I would say in 2017 during the eclipse. Um, but also what we're seeing now is even more portals opening up. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we can get into that later um, and the meaning of those and what they kind of represent and et cetera. But um, yeah, times have definitely shifted and you correct Randy. Uh, I did, I was going through a gestation, just a huge gestation period where the child inside of me would not let me speak to hardly anyone. Um, she was very, very protective and, she, she, the souls that are coming in right now are very in tune and they're more wise than we can even fathom. So, you know, with, with that said, I, I want to just interject this little message as well. Um, raise your children and protect them and, you know, guide them correctly with divine guidance and your, your own intuition, you know, Teach them how to be self-taught, proud of themselves, and encourage themselves as well. So go ahead, Randy. Well, I'll just add to that that, you know, these souls coming in now are coming in to a different energy than what we had, you know, over previous the previous generations. That this gateway's opened up. And just riffing off of the eleven eleven one more time. One of my knowing has been telling me that the 1111 is shifting too. Now, and it's interesting because that's a master, Correct. it's a yeah. master number, I... but it's now going to double. So the, the 1111 takes you into the 22, which is another master number. And it's, exactly. it's a number of intuition. It's actually one of my master numbers. And mind you, um, my birth, uh, my mother's birthday was 10-1. You know, one zero one. Um, my sister's birthday was one zero one. My nephew's birthday was one zero one. Get, you know, talking about the mass balance of masculine and feminine right now, and leading into this next shift on eleven eleven. My daughter was actually born on one zero one. So you have those two ones you know with the feminine zero zero um that she's the fourth of in, in this in my generation uh, not my ge- but the family generation mm-hmm. born on that day yeah. um so it's very important like you said we are going through a huge shift and you know randy i want to say i appreciate you so much because i feel the same way that we share our views we share our opinions but we don't ask anyone to, to to believe what we believe. believe we don't yeah. get on here and we don't preach and we don't say this is the way this is the way like you should believe this we, we should believe that <laughs> you know this is just it, it's it's it is what it is take it or leave it walk away with it with what you will you know if it resonates with you fine if it doesn't then okay but like you said this eleven eleven we we could say that every day is a new eclipse. We could say that every year is a new eclipse and new shifting of timelines. But here's the thing. There are infinite timelines and we're living in all of them, essentially. Exactly. If you, if you actually live and if you actually believe anything that quantum physics states, you're going to believe that there are infinite timelines and that anything is possible. So I, it kind of trips me out. When these scientists, you know, who went to school and had to study quantum physics, don't believe in quantum physics. They're like, no, it's not possible, you know. (laughs) Or, um, for example, you know, doctors, like like any kind of um, chemist, especially any any anyone with an MD or a doctorate or a master's, and they had to study quantum physics, and then then they can't grasp the reality of quantum physics, but they had to pass it. So it's they they know it's true, right? Yeah, well, I mean, because they? because that energy of that age, the, the Newtonian Copernican era, was what dominated this 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 last age. But we're moving out of that, and right, the exactly. transition is think... that there's a whole generation again. You know, we were forerunners for this. I mean, we we got it. But the way so. this generation comes in on an energy that's not based anymore 
or Newtonian physics. And that's that's this this energy that that's kind of gone through, like even the alternative media is just. I agree. The war over the war. It's 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 all consciousness war anyway. And very well put and very well well said and stated. Um, it's a consciousness war. You know, um, for example, I have a neighbor who's a retired Baptist preacher. Okay, got out of it because of the politics. Now he consults psychics, consults me because I am a psychic and a medium. I'm clear cognizant, et cetera. Um, But he got out of that and he's interviewing me or I am giving him a session with Benjamin Franklin because it's one of Benjamin Franklin is one of his favorite uh, diplomats. And he's communicating, you know, Benjamin's talking to me and we're communicating. He's like, so how should we feel about Trump? Like, I was raised Republican and now I'm Democrat. And I said, I just looked at him and I said, Benjamin's saying to you, that's what they want. That's what they want. They want adversity and diversity. It's a conquer and divide. It's a dog and pony show. You know, that that's that past generation. Like, we've, we've got to push through this. And, and like you said, this generation coming in now, they are, they don't have that in their blood or in their genetics or in their DNA. They don't have that adversity. They don't have that division. Yeah, and, see, that's, that's that system that's breaking down. It knows it's breaking down. That's why you have this desperate driving all the time. It's literally psychically driving us constantly. And you can't avoid exactly. it, but it's the stratification of consciousness that wants to keep you in the pocket of the political game. And so that's and why that, politics Randy, and, and all this that, division is so, so heightened. It's so heightened because that is, it's, it's, that's the thing. We have to understand that it's their last, last ditch attempt in these simulations they put us through. Because if you believe in quantum physics, if you believe it's a reality, Okay, if you believe that there's such things as physics, okay, you get into quantum physics, you're going to understand that they're going to, that, that, that timelines are easily, easily interjected and shifted, and we can jump through both. And I'm not talking about, like, immediate time travel. Yes, I, I do think that's possible. Yet, I'm speaking of last-ditch attempts into distracting us from our abilities to realize that this is not the reality we have to live in. We don't have to live in the reality of the public news and mainstream media and the bashing this and the, and, and, and the, and the oh, well, I like Trump and, oh, well, I like this person. It, it, it's not of that. It's, it's like you said, Randy, it's about consciousness. We, and we have to make the decision. It is in our hands right now to use the, to use the discernment the wisdom and the ultimate decision. Are we going to live in the reality that they shove in our face or are we going to be self-taught? Are we going to research? Are we going to do our own healing, our own work and grow and evolve as a species? Because if we don't, it's not going to be a good timeline to live in. Right. right. And we can can choose. It's like shuffling a deck of cards. Exactly. In fact, I'm seeing a tarot deck as I'm saying that. So <laughs> it's kind of. And not only that, you know, I, here's the thing. I, I was on the phone with one of my friends the other day. She's also a psychic, grandmaster Reiki, et cetera. And she says to me, so what do you see? <laughs> I'm like, well, they said like the heavenly, the, the angels, you know, and I'm like, well, Ask them this, and they said no, and ask them this, and they said no. So you're saying no, so why aren't you telling me this? I said, because there's no right or wrong answer. She said, exactly. You know, you can, we all have the choice. And that's the ultimate thing we're going through right now, with especially um, this 2019 Mercury retrograde in Scorpio in the eighth house. It's highly manifesting, and Scorpio is causing us to dig deep literally do physical, mental, spiritual surgery on our bodies, like an emotional 
like surgery on our bodies, you know, and, and our mental and spiritual, like our aura, our energy fields, we're having to do surgery. We're having to go back because it's Scorpio season. And it's, it's like, we have to go into the cave, go into the void and say, what happened in my childhood that caused this, that caused this habit that's not benefiting me? What happened, you know, in my ancestors, you know, yeah. day and age that I need to heal? Because it's a proven fact, even by scientists and anyone can research it that's listening to this podcast, it's a proven fact that we carry generational DNA and trauma. It's encoded in our DNA, and it's our choice to heal it or not. And this is the main thing. This is one of the main things that people need to hear right now, that humanity needs to heal. You're going to sit back, repeat the same pattern, and the sheer definition of insanity? Or are you going to dig deep? And yes, it's going to be painful. Oh, it's going to freaking hurt. Trust me. I'm going through it, and everybody's going through it right now. That's why, in my opinion, maybe not everyone, everyone's, we chose to come down here and say, okay, we're going to correct it this time. We're not coming back here. You know, we're going to go next, our next life is, is going to be a happier one. We're going to be at peace. We're not have to, going to have to go through this because we're going, because the only thing that causes you not to be at peace is the battle within yourself. And your lack of evolution and your lack of evolution of consciousness, your evolution of consciousness and evolving. And it's not limited to one thing. It's limited to all a universal consciousness. It is, it's, it's about grounding. It's about healing. It's about what are you going to do to be a change within yourself and within the world around you? that's going to positively affect you, others, and the, and, and the entire world and the entire universe because our thoughts are a drop in the ocean and it does have a ripple into universes upon universes. And that's just my opinion. And that's why I believe that communication is the universal language. But that's not an opinion, really. That's the butterfly effect. That's the motion of a single right. wing striking against the infinite plane. Just it resonates. It sets up a harmonic, and then we materialize the harmonic when we resonate with it. It's, yeah, and harmonics are everywhere. I actually have harmonics playing right now in my house. You know, yeah. I constantly keep that going just to cleanse the energy. Um, and. And and back to what you were saying, Randy, I kind of want to get back to that. Um, I want to let you speak and about the shift that's going on with this 11-11 right now coming up. Or that the so, day that this podcast. Yeah, I, I sense that, you know, because we appointed this time months ago and um, the passageway that you went through with a gestation, a pregnancy, a birth. Beyond you know, just, <laughs> Because this little baby came in with a million light codes. I couldn't even get out of my house. The sun hit me from inside. And we'll talk about the sun later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will. That, yeah, we actually have a photo of that. So we'll talk about that later. But um, she carried so, much, so many light codes. For example, my first word was light. And her name actually means light. So um, she she came in carrying so many light codes and so many downloads that it was hard for me to even move. It was so intense for my body being in this 3D realm. You know, it was it was very intense. So yes, go on. So what the energy brings with it is a sense of closure on one age going into another age. I mean, yes, now yes, is the time yes, I mean, we're yes. entering Aquarius. You know, yes. this is stuff that, that, that was around when I was a kid. And mm -hmm. if people remember the Broadway musical Hair and the song The Age of Aquarius, I mean, they were, they were singing and dancing and heralding this age 50 years ago. And now... Exactly. Now we're... We're literally in what I call the eye of the needle, which is this portal that goes right. into 
this new age and, and it's oh tell me about it i captured it i captured exactly it yeah we're gonna throw that <laughs> that picture will go up with this with this podcast because it's phenomenal you the captured it the comparison of the eclipse in 2017 yeah. and even today i caught it you know <laughs> so. yes you sent me you were sending me pictures this morning yeah, and it's been happening. But see, I where I live in North Carolina, um, I actually live on the Atlantis Ley Line, so I get shown all this stuffs come all, all of the all of these uh, a lot of these things come to me very quickly because of the grid in which I live. You know, on which I live, should I say? Yeah, it's interesting. You live on the coast. I live in the mountains. So I get I we all have these different grids that we're kind of inhabiting physically. And we're and we're supposed to be there. For yeah. example, one of my best friends lives in Ohio, one of the crappiest parts of Ohio. But she's like, This is where I belong. I'm healing people. She's one of those people and by the way, her name is uh Allison Sadler and or Ali Reiki on Instagram. Shout she out She's an amazing yeah, shout out to her because she is one of those superhumans who is hurting and healing herself while she masterfully heals everyone else around her. I can call her in telepathically, astrally, and say, hey, girl, I need you. And she's there. And same same with me. I can do it, but I can't physically, you know, be on the phone like, okay, I'm going to heal. She, she's just an amazing human being, and I don't know where I'd be without her. I mean... And vice versa, you know, we both give, you know, I, I confirm things for her and, you know, think, things like that. We And that's the thing you were talking about in this age of Aquarius when we were approaching it in the 60s. We were dancing, we were doing all this. And now we were doing all this like in a, on a massive scale, okay? Yet now it's become we've had to draw our circle to a very small circle. Like, only let certain people in, especially yep. with this retrograde going on right yep. now. Um, we've had to let go of toxic, toxic habits, um, relationships, et cetera. Um, but I do want to t- recommend to the, the listeners out there, um, if you if you want to quit smoking, if you want to quit drinking, if there's some kind of toxic habit that you do have, um, it's not going to happen overnight, Okay. So don't force yourself to do it. Don't say, okay, I need to get rid of this. I need to just force it to stop. Because once you try to force something to stop, it's not going to happen. You're creating resistance. So it's going to kind of backfire and come back almost, or can, has the potential to come back tenfold. Okay. Um, So just be gentle on yourself, everyone. You know, Just, just be gentle with yourself because, I mean, I'm, I'm 35 years old and, uh, it's taken me 35 years to get to where I am. And I will say I will continue learning because life is a test. It's, it's a game. It's the matrix in a sense, you know, we're always learning. We're always growing. It never ends. That's called ascension. That's called like evolution. It's called learning. It's called growing. And if you give half of a shit about yourself, your family, your friends, the world around you, the universe, and just like being able to meet your death peacefully, you're going to work on your shit. You're going to get rid of your toxic shit. You're going to get rid of everything that stands in the way of you being the best that you can be. Yeah, and then there's this whole concept like we were just talking about with your friend of, of the of the, of the wounded healer. You know, if you're mm-hmm. waiting around for a perfect shamanic being to come in with wings of gold and heal you, it's going to be forever because everybody's exactly. working on their shit. We carry this is exactly. like we carry this. Every person has a harmonic to themselves, and every person is working on individual strands of our own beingness, the, the exactly. trauma, the PTSD, that, you know, that's, that's one, all of that. How I, yeah, and that's one thing Alan taught me, you know, and things that I've taught her. Um, it, it, it's, 
you know, she's like, we keep going through this. She's like, oh, my God, why didn't I know? And I'm like, oh, my God, why didn't I know? And then we're like, we always get these confirmations, you know. And it just happens like that. Don't all of a sudden look for this sign that it's supposed to be one way. Because nothing is black and white. It's just not. Yes, everything is yin and yang. You need the negative for the positive and the positive for the negative to exist. Yet nothing is always black and white. There's a huge spectrum out there that must and needs to be explored, especially with our, with our number one brain capacity, our pineal gland ca- you know, capabilities, et cetera. You know, there's so many things out there that can literally end all this bullshit that we're putting ourselves through. Yet we still salute to the state. You know, put our children in public school, and my child is in public school right now. She won't be there forever, I can promise you that. You know, um, I just heard this thing that Camilla Harris, she's actually trying to enact a bill where children will be at school from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah, I just... See what I'm saying? I I just posted this the other day on Twitter, because it's a Mm -hmm. nanny state. They they want to bring Mm -hmm. us into a place where they raise our children. Well, he, and here's the thing, and this is one thing I want to get the message across to people. Okay, I can never have this conversation with my fiance's grandmother, but I will say this, because she always said, well, that's what we fought for, women's rights. Well, before, before Aaron Russo's uh, video was removed from Facebook and he was killed, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, he had cancer, supposedly he was killed from cancer. Well, he no. got cancer. No, he didn't. No? No, trust me. No, no, because his video, which I heard, it was in 2010, right? Right. Late 2010, beginning of 11, which was immediately removed. Could not, could not even find it in 2011, okay? He's had an interview, and Rockefeller didn't, it was Nick Rockefeller, right? Right. And Rockefeller didn't know that Aaron was recording it, the great filmmaker, right? So he sits down and he says, Aaron, I think, I think it was maybe, uh, and he says, uh, Aaron, what do you think the women's movement, the women's right movement was about? And he says, women's equality. Aaron said, or uh, Nick said, Nick Rockefeller um, said, you're a fool. Yeah. He said, what? He said, because let me tell you something, Aaron. He said, once we removed, at first we just had one parent away from the home. But once we took the both of the parents away from the home, the children had no choice but look to the state and the government to lead them and society. And then on top of that, we couldn't only tax one person in the home. We now have the ability to tax two people in the home. And these are the Rockefellers guys. The Rockefellers supported the women's right movements. Wake up. So all of you ladies out there who think that you need to go to work and not be there for your children, And I'm not saying it's not right to go to work to provide for your children. I am not saying that whatsoever at all. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just saying if you have the ability to live in the poorhouse and be there for your kids and raise them right, not the poorhouse, but at least survive and be there for your kids and guide them wisely, do it. You know, if you can provide the the correct guidance, you know, don't feel pressured by the society that is that is telling us let the state let the state lead them let the state this is this is insane. I saw a meme the other day. It said the Adams family had it right, like the old Adams family. <laughs> yeah, the original daughter. I wouldn't allow her to go see the Disney film because right, I just right. don't support Disney. I can't. I can't. I can't support the pedophile ring of Disney. I just can't because she really wanted to see it. And I said, no. I said, why don't we watch the old one? She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. And there was a clip, and I, I, I it's actually on uh, Amazon Prime right now. Sorry, Amazon. 
might be taking it down by saying this. <laughs> um, but, you know, said Mr. Adams, all of a sudden, and this was back in, like, black and white, you know? This like, was the first episode kind of, of the Adams family. Like, like you know, and, yep. and he said, and, 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 and this guy comes in, he's like, basically he was a you social have to worker. send your children he's to like, school. He's like, I'm so and so, I want to, you know, why haven't your kids come to school? Da, 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 da. And he's like, well, what? And, and Mr. Adams literally said, why have children if you want to send them away? Exactly. Not only that. When they finally decide to take their children to possibly put them into school with this principal, and they realize the principal's drunk and it's just the secretary, right? They're talking with the secretary, and they're talking about, doesn't he seem crazy, the principal, right? This was in 1964. This This was pre-feminism. Yeah, and it's like, doesn't he seem drunk, like, thinking he's drinking booze? And and Mr. Adams is like, she's like, B-O-O-Z-E in front of the kids. And Wednesday's like booze you know like they don't know how to read or write because they're homeschooled or some crazy stuff you know and he said she was like well don't you want your children to be happy he said if we wanted them to be happy they wouldn't be here at school so that's something to think about do you see what i'm saying i'm not saying everybody pull your kids out of school right now because you know what i mean i have a child a child that's in school in public school but she will not be there for very long. Yeah, no, we did this hope. with we did this with our kids. I mean, um, they were all homeschooled on some level at some point, and it was a mixture. Mm-hmm. My youngest never went to public Same. school. Same. So, um, Same. but here's the thing: we have been literally mind controlled. First off, into believing in an economic system that's all providing. So what they did starting in the late 60s and early 70s was they they were at that point beginning to deplete the economic system that had grown up around the post-war world, the military-industrial complex. I mean, the first round of that was, and this is history I remember, but the first round of that was largely in 73 and 74 right, right, when right. we went off gold standard and that was also the time when we would begin to implement relations Kennedy's with China assass- like going on Kennedy's assassination <laughs> exactly yeah I mean that was there was a really turbulent you know, era when the government were getting fed up with the BS they wanted to end the, the gold they wanted to end the treasury the 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 Fed and uh, they were weeded out, but all the ones that, that didn't want to end the Fed, they're still there. <laughs> you know? They're well, still here. The long arc of this is that they're very, you know, we don't, we tend to think in, in cycles of maybe 12 to 18 months. These people have worked in cycles of 100 years, and that's small Thank compared you. to the Chinese, yeah. which work in 1,000 year cycles. Yeah. So yeah. generationally, yeah. What they did from the beginning of the 20th century was they took us to the place where we got to this tightly controlled, vertically integrated economic system, which told you, and you know, this is telling, you have to earn a living. But but what? We have to earn a living. Earning a living. You know, how about, here's the thing, and and maybe I'm going to tell you this and and the viewers and listeners, I'm going to say this. I have, for seven years, been writing a book, okay? How many books in that one book I've tried to write have made it? Zero. Because it hasn't been time. Yet, here's the thing. How can they tell us to sit here and live by societal standards and what? Like, like don't raise your children. Don't do this. Like, it's time to be – it's it's time for Amer- – it, it, not only America, but – just the entire planet and the humans that exist on it to wake up and say, no, I'm going to be self-taught. No, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let this mind control BS control my family. Because at the end of the day, end of the day, what do you have? When you're lying on your deathbed, who is standing around you? Because no man is an island. One of my favorite authors, Henry David Thoreau, no man is Mm. an island. Who's going to be around you? Your family. You know, who's going to be there? Your family. And and sometimes it's going to be a lot of friends because blood isn't always thicker than water. 
But here's the thing. I would much rather not be mind controlled, not listen to the government and their mind, their CIA propaganda. And I would rather raise a child that is going to be a leader and stand up and lead and make a difference in their world, others' world, and the entire glo- across the globe to change things. I want my children to be the change they want to see in the world. You know, like Dr. Seuss said, be the change you want to see in the world. That's what my best friend who passed away from suicide always said. And it's very pertinent that we really let these words resonate with us. Be that change you wish to see within the world. Now, that doesn't mean go out and save everyone. Because, you know, essentially, at first, that's how I took it. And I went, like, overboard. I was like, oh, i got to save everyone. <gasps> that came with a lot of hurt, <laughs> you know. It was worth it because I was taught many lessons. Yet, at the end of the day, if I don't get that book completed, which I know I will, yet if it doesn't happen, it happen, at least I will know and rest in the knowing that I raise children that will make a difference at least. I can at least give them the knowledge that I have. Like you spoke about creating that balance between public and Isn't not. The, you know what I mean? Here's a thought. Aren't your children the book you're writing? I mean, isn't that what exactly. we leave as a legacy? Thank you. Thank you. And it doesn't, and it doesn't have to be the people around us are part of a, a tapestry. You know, and we're, we're because of the material. Oh, trust me, because our circles, everyone's circle right now, even within the entire world, is drawing very thin. Because everyone's having to come back into their own being and say, okay, what habit, wh- what has affected me? Like, I did this 10 years ago, and I'm still working, you know what I mean? But I did this a while ago, and I cut out the toxic relationships. Yet, right now, we're being called even more. We have to understand, toxic relationships isn't just the people that are around you. It's the relationship you have with society. Are you watching Wendy Williams? Are you getting your news from The View? Like, that's also toxic, you right, know? Right. Yeah. Netflix is toxic. We have these coping mechanisms that we need to drop. Coping me- mechanisms aren't just drugs and alcohol or heroin or crack. Or whatever. It's not, that's not it. It's everything. It can be escaping through, like, having to be out in nature, which nature is very beneficial, but let's get back to the balance, you know? We can have our, like, phones are a drug. Netflix is still a drug. Porn is still a drug. And a horrible one at that because 80% of porn is sex slavery and human trafficking. That they threaten these women and children, whatever with. You know, I just... The, the, the things that are going on in this world right now is baffling, you know? And, and like you said, it's being brought to light this week. Mars goes square in Pluto. So everything is being brought to light. So we really need to think about our future and what we're going to do with our future, whether it's continuing a slave job, because I'm going to tell you something. I have seen People that are employed right now be absent from their homes even more than ever. For example, my fiance. For example, my brother-in-law was told, he's a property manager, right? He was told that if there are crazy snow conditions, you will have to stay overnight. He's the manager. Why should he have to, like, literally, like, are you on an army base again? You know? (laughs) Like, (laughs) talk about a slave to society guys evaluate if the slavery because it was never abolished it was just rewritten okay if the slavery of your job is worth your family life and raising these children up to be the next leaders because that's our future generation yeah well that's the the constriction that goes on in the eye of the needle everything is being constricted the world and Randy, is, I want you to evaluate more. I, I want you to explain more to the listeners on the eye of the needle. 
Okay, so... For those who haven't listened to your podcast before. Yeah, so we'll put this graphic up. It's the solar pictures that you were taking. And it okay, really... Okay, you compared. It really visually showed us something that I was seeing sort of prophetically is that as we go into 2020, you know, 2020 vision, in the eye of the vision, needle, yes. we're threading into a very narrow constriction energetically in terms of every system in the world is, is, is being constricted. And, and it feels... Okay, can you can you explain your definition of the eye of the needle? Because I don't, I, I want the listeners. To hear well, there's it. a lot of definitions of it. It's a parable okay. that that's, that's it's actually an, a a very old parable from the Middle East that comes down through Hebrew tradition that was right. then and recited some, some by. Some listeners don't know this, so right. that's why, like. We, yeah, and I'm not good at fleshing out details sometimes. So Issa, who you know is Jesus or, you know, Christ, used this parable to talk about the fact that it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And it was a metaphor huh? for how we cannot take with us into a spiritual space all of the baggage that we've accumulated as we've gone through this 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 world Drama, system. Drama, money, all of it, etc. <laughs> all of it. We can't take our own shit with us, which is why you have this this gigantic window e to correct it and get it right. right you now. don't. And, and see, the, the thing about it is that we lived in this wide open contrast in this world for so long, metaphorically. We're entering another age, hence another world, because that's actually what the word age means. If you if you look the word up, the word aeon is a world. That's how uh, apocalyptic Christianity got to this this end times thing at the end of the world. And revelation, because apocalypse actually means a disclosure. To see, of to vision, to see. Apocalypse, that, yeah, apocalypse means a disclosure of information and vision. It so, doesn't mean... The world's coming to an end. It means a new world coming. So think about the eye of the needle and think about a single eye, okay? Now think about your two eyes, but they're actually one eye. Because ultimately, what we call the third eye is perfect mm -hmm. vision, perfect sight, and it's a field of vision. Lies right in the crown, produces DMT every day, every night, which is, by the way, an illegal drug, which probably should be because... Right now, I don't think a lot of people or the hipsters can handle it. No offense, hipsters, but go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, we've lived in this two-eye <clears throat> digital binary reality. Right, exactly. And see that, and and I want to talk about also um, with just just for like two seconds, three maybe one minute most. Um, Going to escape your reality by doing this, um, these ayahuasca and DMT retreats. I want to say just stop it, guys. You have all that within you. You can literally tap into DMT by giving your house, giving your house a sound bath and listening to YouTube. Without the Bluetooth and distortion of a lot of EMF waves, you can give your mind, body, and your home a sound bath and meditate and get to that state. You have that DMT within you. You don't have to pay well to go to these retreats and flip out and have a horrible experience. Because mm, yeah, 70 to 80% of the time, people have really bad experiences when they go on these retreats. That's just a warning, you know, that I have for those out there. Um, not to say that people haven't had amazing ones yet. I'm just letting people know, the listeners, that, that it can happen. You can have a very negative experience if you haven't healed first or what have you. But you have all that within you, you know? So that's my take on the, the DMT, the ayahuasca, for people who are trying to reach this higher consciousness that we already have within us, that's already setting in within the world around us. We just have to take it and grab it, you know, 
and it's within our hands, within our DNA. So with this eye of the needle, um, and this picture that I captured the other day, um, and I'm, I've been continuing to capture it, but as I said earlier, living on the Atlantis ley line in Wilmington, North Carolina, um, I will say that I kind of almost get it very, I, I get it very quickly and, uh, it can be extremely intense yet we all have access to it because we have our astral bodies that we can travel to and ask during meditation. I think, I think getting back to this balance of masculine, feminine and masculine, feminine, and just the balance of just like grounding and balancing chakras and cleansing daily, cleansing our energy daily. Um, we can really have, and experience our ultimate life. And, and, and it's not like we have to sit here and be like, oh, we have to hire someone to cleanse our energy, which sometimes we do, but we always, we, we need to stop the codependency. That's another thing with the society right now is this codependency. Do they try to teach you, oh, you need someone to do this and that and that, which in part sometimes is true. Like I said, no man is an island. Yet in the same sense, we've got to learn how to literally like blast some YouTube meditation and, and meditate alone and do this alone and not try to escape in the convenience of another space. We have to respect others' spaces and let go of that codependency. So, yeah, I mean, this whole, so, yeah. the whole codependency cycle that we're in and, and, how unhealthy that is and yet that's the culture the culture is even us our codependency with our own uh, our own systems our own demons really exactly and not only that our codependency that the government is is wanting us to latch on to you you have to remember that society trains us to be codependent and who controls society the government who controls hollywood who controls the mainstream media like Disney World, you know? Okay. Um, Epstein Cruises came from, like, Disney Cruises went to Epstein Island. You know what I'm saying? Which is owned by ABC, which Disney's owned by ABC. They killed the story in 2016. Actually, Disney owns ABC. You got that reversed. Well, that's what I meant. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. So thank you for directing me. So, um... It, that's that's the thing. This, this codependency issue with looking to the media. Oh, I have to have someone else to tell me. Oh, I have to have something else to feed me. And and, and that's why I was saying before, we think we have to have a healer, you know, to heal us when we have it all within us. We have we have the ability to be independent and get in front of YouTube and, and sit on the floor and meditate and activate our DMT instead of going and spending thousands on an ayahuasca retreat. You know, we have that within us. We have everything within us. We don't need to be codependent on other people. We just don't. Yes, like I said, no man is an island, yet in the same sense, let go of that well, in a lot of like, ways, what like, that what that culture is, that's an extension of the of the Hotel California operations. I mean, and the basically, CIA, uh, CIA exactly. And I mean, they just basically were running shamanic drug programs. There's so I'm a little conflicted sometimes about this because I read Carlos Castaneda, <laughs> and I've never well, done that's, ayahuasca. That's what I said when some, I, when I said like maybe eighty percent are going to fail, but maybe the 20% out there are really like essentially seeking a higher state. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because 80% of humans out there right now can't handle those, uh, additional drugs. And, and like you said, the codependency with go to this place, go to that place, go to this cult, the I am cult, you know, 
that's another thing that needs to be I am, oh, yeah. I am BS because it's it's a cult. Um, another thing, I, I'm not saying like there's no power, and I am, but uh, get rid of the God cult assumption because I am means I am God. Well, since we brought this up, you know, the I am movement is actually born that's actually one of the early forms of of uh ufo new age which we're now living so <laughs> if you go out and, and and you look up wikipedia and it tells you about the i am movement which was this guy named guy ballard back in the 30s who claimed he met saint germain at mount shasta and that was the beginning of launching off this entire ufo New Age exactly. cult. Exactly. And, and and let's just get straight to the point. I mean, this actually just brings us right up to the the Blue Avians and Corey Good. Okay, up to the chase with the I Am movement. You remember how Guy Gaia TV used to be Gaia yeah. TV, and we could all get on it and meditate and do yoga, and it was so peaceful. But then when the CIA operatives. I can't tell you his exact, I can't tell you his exact placement in the CIA. I can't tell you, his, I don't know his ranking exactly, but I know he owns a history channel as well who broadcasts ancient aliens. Um, when he also bought Gaia TV, it became Guy I am, Guy am, I am, a cult. Do you know how many people, how many, um, Past, I should say, I, w I wouldn't say co-workers or colleagues because I used to do public speaking because I've, I've hidden for a while. And, and for the listeners and viewers, um, I just want to say and kind of give a shout out to Randy um, Boggins because he's the first person in two years that I have actually felt comfortable um, being on an on a podcast with I do not let anyone into my space anymore because that I am movement when they changed it to guy I am I saw many of my friends my good friends I'm not going to mention names right now but maybe I will um in a bit I am many of my I wouldn't say friends I would say colleagues, people I worked with in the disclosure movement. Um, when it turned into that, and I saw people um, get shows, their own shows on that TV, and, and then I looked at their Facebook post, and it was like, I am, like, I am in caps locks. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's turning into a cult. And you know what? I'm thinking in my head, like, if they – if, the, if these people were really disclosing the truth, would they have their time? Hell no. Would they have their time on the History Channel owned by, on, owned by, this, former, on, owned by this former CIA worker? Hell no. They wouldn't. They wouldn't have their time. Um, but they got it. And they got it because they want soft disclosure, which I will say the soft disclosure has its yin and yang. Okay. Kind of like these timelines, like these parallel realities, like these infinite realities, kind of like flatters, rounders. It's all part of the matrix. In my opinion, that's just my opinion. Um, yet I want to reiterate if these people were really putting out the ultimate disclosure, guys, Corey Good, David Wilcock, if they were the ultimate and all be all, and they were full of truth and purity, why would they get airtime? Ask yourselves that. Or anyone on Guy MTV. Okay, guys, ask yourself that. Please use your discernment and your your wisdom. You know, I know it's I know it's hard. I don't like calling people out, but I'm just saying. And it's not Corey's fault. It's not David's David's fault because we all know cloning is possible. 
All right. We all know mental hijacking is possible via EMF waves. You know, we we all know that. Even even all of us are prone to being hijacked via Wi-Fi. This that. You know, that's one towers, etc. Um, mind control. We're all prone to. We're all not prone necessarily, but they have the capability to do that to all of us. So why would they have the capability to do that to David Wilcock? In my opinion, he used to be super pure. And now it's like, what the are you talking about? It's like, we watch ancient, I don't even watch ancient aliens anymore. Who does? Same old news, same old bullshit. Like, it's not an evolution of disclosure. If it was, it wouldn't be like mainstream air broadcast on History Channel or... <laughs> or guy am tv you know i am I'm so let's God. let's let's drive this right to the core of this thing because the original outline that we we put together for this show started from a conversation that you and i had about the simulation and it's a big subject but we can we can focus it here because it goes into all of these these black operations, mind control programs, the CIA, media insurgency, the co-opting of alt media, but it really goes into even what I'm reluctant to say malevolently, but I mean it compassionately, the victimization of mind control programs that were run via simulation. Exactly. And, and here's the thing, Randy. Um, I've made several appearances doing interviews uh, with Super Soldier, James, mm-hmm. uh, James Rank, and... Um, Andy Bishago. Exactly. Well, Andy and I were very connected yeah, Aaron, uh, yeah. via, via Mars, uh, and he can confirm that easily. Um, but here's the thing people have to understand. I've had people come to me, you know oh, you're still involved with this program and this and that and da 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 And I'm like, look, number one, it's a simulation. It's the Matrix. You ever watch the freaking... It's like these realities that we're involved in. They, they can, it, it's, it's the consciousness that the syndicates are interested in. It's not the physical. Duh. Why do you think they do rituals? They do spiritual shit. You know... <laughs> They do satanic spiritual rituals. They do consciousness rituals. They're more spiritual than you can ever imagine. It's not a physical thing, guys. So let's drop the physical shit. And and I think that everyone who listens to Corey and, and this and that, or even me in the past, would probably think, oh, they actually had this physical experience where they were a super soldier or with Andrew Vachago and this and that and blah, 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 blah. You know, like, no, it's it's not that. It's a simulation, okay? And this goes back to what I was saying. The quantum physics. The quantum physics. The infinite realities. So this is what they want to use, it, use us in. They want to hijack our consciousness. The movie The Matrix totally showed that. Totally showed that. Completely. Put it in our face, but in a very physical way. Do you see what I'm saying? So I think that we need to drop this physical attachment. I need, I think, I, I know, I think we, in my opinion, we need to recognize the fact that Corey Good and David Wilcock have been hijacked to their, and, and I don't think they, they even know it. I mean, they've possibly been cloned. I'm not even going to lie. I, I don't know. I'm not going to say they've been cloned, but I do think they've been hijacked in a sense, for sure. I'm not saying Corey was not in the programs, because I was in the programs. Randy, you were, there were a lot of people, yeah, no. so, probably 90, 90, freaking 9% of humans were in these programs, all right? Because they want our consciousness. That's the thing. They well, that was the whole thing, was that we went from, if you go back and, I'm not without compassion, and first off, let me let me address this. I'm not diminishing the experiences of any of these people by saying it was simulation, because we live in a simulation. We live 
in exactly. si- nested it's, Russian Russian nesting dolls yeah, of simulation. I'm not diminishing them either. Like I honestly feel sorry for that. From a neurological yeah. standpoint, it was all very real, and from the standpoint of how they utilized these simulations interacting with human subjects, it was a weaponized program. And that's the part of it that we don't really process because I've had this conversation and I've had it with Andy um, that we have to allow for the fact that what we understand is our experiences, even so-called IRL in real life, a lot of it is the result of feedback loops that we're interacting with on a a regular basis. And so, remember when we began this this podcast, we talked about the consciousness war. So, the war is for your consciousness, and what better way to weaponize it than, than to put it into a system that creates feedback loops neurologically, where they then use predictive programming to do outcomes on the wider population. And this was what I came to understand when I went back and started looking more and more at Project Looking Glass and what that really was and how it functioned and why it failed the way it did. And Project Looking Glass actually failed in 2010. It simply began to show up in the system via what they call the Mandela Effect after 2012 because the energies just drove this whole thing. But they no longer had the ability to harness mass consciousness to do even the remote viewing programs anymore. And that was a tell on the exactly. system that they, they, they simply, no matter how much, so they've strapped all these networks right. together. You know, they're building quantum right. computers and they're doing AI and sophisticated advanced algorithms and they still can't get it up anymore because consciousness trumps technology. Pardon Thank the you. Trump term. Thank you. That's exactly what's happened. Um, I completely agree. And um, like I said, I'm I'm like you. I'm not blaming Corey. I'm not putting, I'm not bashing Corey for this. It, it's all the mind control and, and all the operatives. It, it's like, and, but one person I will call out and, and like, honestly, I don't, excuse my French, but I don't give a shit, is John D'Souza. Um, I will call him out. And this may come out to backfire on me, but honestly, I really don't care um, at this point. I think it needs to be known. Um, when nobody knew him, when I was trying to put him on the map, the former FBI agent, right? Okay. Yeah, we have a bunch of these guys out there. (laughs) He literally, literally is is not okay. He's not cloned. He is still in the FBI program. Like, he, he, okay, I did an interview with him. I interviewed him. Okay? I put it out there, got views on Twitter, and then I gave up Twitter because it's become a battleground. And that's why I only have Facebook and Instagram. Um, and you can find me, Lindsay, I'm Lian, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, Hooper, um, under Facebook. And uh, Hoop of Stars on Instagram. Yet, I will say, John D'Souza, when I tried, when he interviewed me, and I... He wanted to do an interview interview with me, and I grilled him. I said, "So why won't they let you? Um, why won't they let you say this or say that?" And 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 I just kind of danced around because I didn't want to like interfere and et cetera. Um, and and we we went on during the conversation um, during our interview or our conversation like we're having. And I said, I mentioned to him, he said, do you think that EMF weapons and, you know, these radio frequency towers or Gwen Tower, whatever, have an effect on us? I said, of course. I said, I'm clear audience. Um, And I said, every time I hear lawnmower, any kind of lawn equipment, it like, it has a megahertz that I cannot, it like triggers me. And I shit you not guys. 
he starts playing, quote, as a joke, he says, Lindsay, what is this? And all he hears, like, lawnmowers. I'm like, he's like, I was like, dude, why? Are, uh, that's a lawnmower. And this was at the end of the interview or the conversation, like you and I are having, Randy. And then he's like, like, followed up by that, he could see how much it irritated me. And followed up by that, he says, what is this? And I'm like, oh, my God, dude, it's a leaf blower. Why are you doing this? And I was, like, trying to laugh it off, but I couldn't. Like, that shit right there, guys, wake up. Use discernment on these people who are the top speakers, okay? They're not all in it for the money. They're being CIA mind-controlled. Like John D'Souza, yeah, he's an ex-FBI agent, but he's also being mind controlled too. To, he, he was to like get to me because I had I use the term ex and I was in these programs. I use the term ex advisedly here because it's just like Robert David Steele, ex CIA, that Steele is still operating as a CIA right, insurgent right, right. into the media. I mean, look. <sighs> But we that's were with every beer, Andy. When, when he people. did that, when he did that, I just had a horrible taste in my mouth, and that's why I want to advise the viewers and the listeners right now to say, "Hey, maybe these guys that we're going to, you know, maybe these guys we're listening to, these top speakers, aren't all they've cracked up to be. Maybe they're actually being hacked, you know." It's just a warning of discernment, you know, kind of like the retrograde we're going through right now. Watch your shit. Keep keep your circle small. And your circle doesn't mean like your immediate friends. It also means what you're listening to via music, via television, via etc. The list goes on. Yeah, when we were talking about kind of closing off our circles and, you know, I mean, the people who listen to this know that over the last three months, I've tightly clamped down my circle. I mean, to the point where I'm almost not doing interviews at all because I just don't have an interest anymore in pursuing the latest gab fest over current subjects, whether it's current affairs or the latest woo woo coming from the alt networks. Thank you. And the the point of it is that I started to sense the energies around myself. Same. When, when, so here's the thing. You know, I've I been doing... I started that last year. I started that when I got pregnant. Well, actually late last year. Late 2018. That's when I started. So, you know, for people like us that have been out in the public, and I've been out there doing this platform 10 years, and now I've got planes flying over Same. Me again. So, Same. I, so, I've so, got, uh, I've got, uh, I've been out there for the last 10 years just disclosing information. Um, I was out there hardcore for two to three years yeah. doing interviews, people interviewing me. And I actually made some, some of them take a lot of it down. That's why you're not going to find a lot on me anymore because I was like, uh, because the interviewer was either it it, it, it it just didn't feel right to, you know um, whether my message I, I felt like my message could be misconstrued because I did not I did not assert and I did not clarify that it was a simulation that's a super soldier thing this black ops these secret programs are a simulation and this is the thing people need to understand. You go through it, you have flashbacks, you assert it, you heal from it, and you let it go. You don't dwell on it and let it, let it cause you to go in a, into a psychosis. Because that's almost what happened with me. I almost went into a psychosis because I didn't clarify. I didn't work by the universal laws. I didn't clarify that it was a simulation. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, I don't think any of us did because we didn't at that point completely grasp that concept. Correct, correct. Or, or that it was in fact 
more, it may actually be more traumatic and more horrible exactly. than the actual and what we think of as MK Ultra, which were real programs. Look, there were people that were tortured under under various programs going back to Dormouse, Artichoke, right, right. you know, all the programs that they did not toss out into the public. MK Ultra was basically outed. But those were real programs. I'm not diminishing that. I'm not diminishing the suffering no. that people have no, gone I'm not through. Either. And that needs to be made real clear here. But energetically, the bigger scope of this was, in fact, running a simulation on top of selected core groups and using their consciousness to then drive into the public arena very advanced mind control systems, which we're seeing rippling exactly. through. And that's the, and that's the thing. I, I think that a lot of um, humanity cannot grasp the fact of the technology they have. You know, I mean, they have straw man technology. They have, I mean. Like somebody, like like mothers flipping out on their children and murdering them, things like that. Like just things that a mother would never do. Yeah, you know, just like all kinds of crazy ish that they're that they weaponize. Like talk about weapons of mass destruction, you know? Simulations. Like it, it all goes back to harvesting our loosh, our consciousness. That's what they want, and that's why we have to break free and get back to what it used to be and, and a mixture of what it used to be, the homestead, the family, raising up, you know, your children to make a difference in the world, and then going above that and, and correcting the generational shit that can hold your children back from going even further to really eliminate those generational cur curses and patterns and, um, and, 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 and culturistic habits that, that don't, that don't benefit us. Yeah. And I mean, let's talk about the generational thing a little bit. I, I, I've talked about this over the years. I've never done a formal presentation on it about the fact that when I was studying Hebrew, I located uh, root words in the Hebrew related to the word generations that when you began to understand first off how Hebrew itself operated as a language being read from right to left and then the, the consciousness of that language in terms of its symbolic aspects there was this whole thing that opened up to me where I began to understand that we are in fact our own ancestors as trippy as that sounds we are basically repeaters of a generational energetic that course, goes back and forth one, through time num of course number one it's energetic number two it's encoded in our dna for example my grandmother carried my children's eggs in her womb. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it's genetically encoding on top of energetic. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's something that definitely needs to be asserted when it comes to, if you guys out there, you want to heal, you got to go way back <laughs> because, and here's the thing. There's usually only one sibling in the family who carries that generational karma. Okay. Hmm. And that's, that's what we need to come correct with. Yeah. That's what everybody needs to know. This is one thing that Ali taught me. And a shout out to Ali. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> this is, and that's where it gets complicated because there's only, and, and they're usually the black sheep. They're always <laughs> the black sheep. They are always the yeah, black sheep. Yeah, boy. Yeah. You listeners out there that are the black sheep, y'all are the ones that are carrying the generation. Literally a scapegoat. Karma. That's literally the image of the scapegoat. Well, right because there. because it's it, it, we chose that though. We chose we did. to be rise up, stand up, and come out strong, and 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 just try to save the effing world. You know, you know, because we had seen and felt all that our ancestors went through. And uh, why wouldn't we want to save the world when we're carrying that on our shoulders? We want to correct some shit, you know. We want to, we want, we want to fix it. 
Why wouldn't we? When we're carrying that weight on us, why wouldn't we want to fix it? I was always called weird, sick, crazy by my family, you know? I mean, we get along now, yet in the same time, you, you see what I'm saying? It takes years and years to to get over that, but you have to you have to correct your generational curses. You have to you have to look at it. You have to research it. You have to see it. You have to acknowledge it. You have to dig deep to see where their issues came from, and then you have to put it on yourself like okay this is where my issues are coming from on top of my current immediate family issues in this generation you know which makes it even more complicated and then you have to begin to dig again within yourself because it's all within you and then you have to say hey okay I'm digging I see you all right what are we going to do about this then you heal. Then you let it go. After you heal, and the healing process is like probably five different steps. And if anyone wants to know a bit about the healing process of, of releasing these curses and releasing these certain things, they can always message me on Facebook or Instagram. So, you know, I do help with that. Um, yeah, I, I do want to say that, that that's why it weighs so heavy on us, the, the, the black sheep of, of the family, because there's only one carrier in the generational karma in this day and age to remove, I could say, the curses or the karma, what, what have you, or the patterns. Yeah, it's like basically you go back in the time and you heal basically heal a, a timeline as yep, much as but that, that's the thing you really do have to like literally because like i said the black sheep they have all the gifts they're empaths they're usually psychic or a uh, clear clear cognizant i know i'm clear cognizant which I mean, and, and you're like i said you you have to it, it's painful and randy i think we need to remind the the people listening it's not going to be a comfortable process so if you want to have comfort don't even attempt it like but it's it's going to be painful but yet it will be worth it it will be worth it because you will clear it you will heal from it and you will come out a different happy renewed healed person and have a new life and a new generation that's going to heal this world and make a difference yeah, it's not only going to take, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take, it takes time because we work in time. Time is the material we operate in. And this concept that we can do a weekend retreat or a couple of sessions with a shaman and heal from this stuff, those things can initiate the process. But this is, you know, and I know exactly. because I've gone through this in cycles. And I mean, I, I've been in it now for probably about 36 months of just this this next level of healing and reaching back deep into trauma mm -hmm. traumas and personalities traumas and things that happened to us things that we and did trauma isn't trauma is in everything especially if this, we chose to incarnate at this time to not only hear heal our or correct our family trauma our generational that followed down to us and our immediate family trauma for also healing the trauma of the world because we came with, we came in with all these gifts and abilities to do so. And here's the thing, more people than they know or than they realize have these same abilities. If they would just realize it, recognize it and say, okay, I accept it. Let's do it. Let's get on with the program and evolve spiritually, mentally, Etc. Yeah, and so you have this is why we have this elevation and all this stimulation inside of the simulation 
is the drugs, the alcohol, the availability now of, of pornography and widespread, I will say, oh aberrant God, sexuality, so bad, yeah. is because we want to numb ourselves. It's Pink Floyd all over again. We all yeah, want to be it, comfortably that's why, numb. That's why, yeah, that's why if you look at if. If you search my profile on Facebook, um, I shared a very personal story about PTSD and what I went through in my first relationship with my first two children. Um, it explains that. Um, it, 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 was, it, it was the first time I had ever in 15 years been able to come out with it, you know. And it was difficult. And like you said, Randy, it, it's it's not comfortable. It's freaking painful. It's it's not it's not the easiest thing. But I'm gonna tell you, when you come out on top of it, and when you actually process it and do it, because there are a lot of people out there like us. Um, if not seventy to ninety percent. I would say that between 70 and 90, that 20% don't even know they have the capability or either, or the 70% may not know. Maybe only it's the 20%. We have no idea. Yeah. And the same they everyone needs to know that they can do it, that they can come out on top. It's going to be okay. And they don't, they do not need to throw themselves through a psychosis in order to do it. Yet it will take work and they need to be prepared because I remember my journey. Do you remember yours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All too well. And I'm not trying to get people scared. I'm just trying, you know, I want to allow people to know the reality of situations and the simulations because we're also healing the simulation trauma, not just the family trauma, not just the physical trauma. We're healing the hijacking of consciousness trauma. And that's what makes it so legit. Pop, like, you know, in a sense, hardcore and complicated. And I think a lot of people are going to resonate with this. Because a lot of people feel it. Especially right now. With where we are. Yeah, we're, we're going into a heightened period now. I mean, the energies are... Yeah, well, like you said, reverting to, back to the eye of the needle. Yeah. We're going through that time right now. Everyone, I think, right now is evaluating. Where am I? What should I do? Oh, my gosh. Like, it's almost, I feel like it's almost like a panic attack of the globe, in a sense. Yeah, I mean, look, if you're a sentient human being, if you're not an NPC, if you're not an RPG, if you're somebody that's going through the shit, that means that basically you're a person who's going through the eye of the needle. I mean, this is the process exactly. for conscious exactly. humanity. Right, right. And we don't realize that because we're surrounded by so many artificial life forms that pose as human, that we think yeah, are Randy, human. By the, by the way, um, speaking of life forms, um, I did share a photo with you about the ET in the window of my yep. house. And that is something that was taken by my friend when he was trying to send a picture to his, uh, to one of his friends. He had just gotten a new car. It was about two years ago, I would say. And, um, he, zo he eventually zoomed in on the picture, and there's a sheer E.T. looking through the blinds. And you can find it on my Instagram. Um, I sent Randy the picture, but I don't know if it'll be able to come out. Uh, yes, We're going to put say, some of this out over top of this. Say, so, I do have yeah. to mention that if anyone, any of the viewers or listeners see this photo, you have to understand that the blinds were closed. There should have been no light coming from them. Nothing standing in the window. Whatsoever. It's weird. It's like a shadow box effect. Exactly. Um, and there's even a box on top of, like, the light surrounding the CT's head. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> that's uh, so. If you want to go to my Instagram and view it, it's a uh, hoop of stars on Instagram. Um, and you have to ca- scroll down a little bit to really view it very well pixelated because it was zoomed in and it could get distorted if we try to present it on this podcast yet. I will say that uh, that was one of the most the most capturing and almost like an epiphany in, in my life. I had been going through a lot of things and while I was in the disclosure movement um, and this this was one thing above all that, that struck me as okay. Like, I know I speak about it. I know I feel it. I know I sense it. I know it's there. But here's this physical proof that my friend took a picture of while we were just standing in the street, and he just wanted to capture a picture of his car. And this thing is inside of my house, you know? And I'm like, whoa. And this goes back to um, the simulation. Um, For example, the movie, Jupiter Ascending, have you seen that, Randy? Yes, several times. That's what I would compare this picture to. No one else could see it, yet they were there. Kind of like the saying, they're always among us. It's true. So this is where we, you know, the flaw in the disclosure movement has largely been the search for confirmation by government agencies of something that government agencies themselves are either being controlled by or do not have the ability to discern. We want scientists and physicists and empirical evidence of something that's a spiritual interdimensional consciousness that's intruded into us we've had proof of this for 10,000 years that is exactly what this picture felt like to me like the whole Jupiter sending scene where she could see everything in the room but no one else could well I can see this thing looking out my living room window from my front porch you know yeah. Yeah, the camera captured it. Not mine, someone else's. And it was simply to take a picture of his car, his new car that he had just bought to send to his friend. So you tell me, you know. Or someone tell me. This all makes perfect sense. No, there are things in our consciousness and hidden from history for so very long and simulations and things that have been cloaked that are coming to the surface now that we all need to face. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's the truth. Yeah, it's something you never understood, but it's there now. It always has been. It's just coming to light. And we all need to face it. We need to accept accept it and, and do the best that we can within our lives, others' lives, our environment, planet, the universe, Etc. Just create that consciousness ripple that's always going to benefit all reality and all humanity. Yeah, the disclosure movement. So now we have TTSA exactly. to to the stars with Tom DeLonge and uh, being run by um, the. Uh, offspring of the Mellon family, Christopher Mellon, who was an, uh, an insider into military intelligence. And you got to know, I mean, there's this group called the Aviary that's run all these UFO programs endlessly since the 50s. That this is just another iteration to keep you dazzled and paying money, by the way, to put seats, to put asses in seats in, in conferences when... All you have to do is go back and read even the mystical books of history. I mean, the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the Vimanas from from Hindu history, those those weird pictures of Madonna and and Messiah with the UFOs in the backgrounds from uh, the Middle Ages. I mean, we've had disclosure forever. Exactly, that's what I just said. We have. We've had it forever. So what I ask of you as listeners 
is to do your own research. Learn how to be self-taught. Don't look to the state. Don't look to the government. I know some of you who are listening are like 17, 18 years old. Very few. But some of you are. You know, take our words into consideration. It's your choice to believe it or not, you know. We're not pushing anything. We just want everything to be considered, in my opinion. So... You know, one of the most powerful aspects of conferences when I went to them, and I don't anymore, wasn't who was on the platform with with a PowerPoint presentation. It was the people who got together inside of the conferences and shared. And this is a this is a cue, the interpersonal interaction of you being able to energetically put out your experience. Without looking, the validation comes from the fact that it's a common, there's a common energy to this. I mean, people who know just know, and people who don't know will never know. And that really is the juggernaut of disclosure in one sense, is that you can't merchandise this, you can't market it. And what they've done is they have a counterfeit that they've put out there in order to keep us dazzled and also away from even trusting our own knowingness about what exists. Of course, always. I mean, and it, this is going to happen. But that, I mean, you know, Randy, like I said, that's what they want. <laughs> That's what they want. They want to keep you dazzled and paying money and endlessly searching for something that you already have inside of yourself. Gosh, where have we heard that before? Perfect. Thank you. Like I said, with all these, like, you need to go to these ayahuasca retreats. Well, why don't you first try meditating, you know, and and focusing on your pineal gland and activating that DMT you don't always have to have it while you're sleeping and dreaming. You can have it awake while meditating easily. Take take back control of your consciousness. You know? I think that's what this message should be about, is taking back control of your consciousness. Breaking free from the simulations. Yes, you're going to have flashbacks. Yes, you're going to have trauma. But, you know, heal it, process it, process it, heal it, and let it go. Because they're losing control. They can't continue it forever. That's why so many people have broken free. And they will continue to break free. Yeah. You know, in that day, I guess we'll no longer do podcasts or anything. Actually, we will. Because we can share, we can share journeys, but... You know, I've said for a long time, all these UFO researchers, if they ever got the answers for the questions they asked, their careers are over. Right, exactly. <laughs> because I mean, that's why that that's what I said earlier. Like, if 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 these guys, if these disclosure top speakers were speaking true disclosure, they would not have airtime. They wouldn't have broadcast time. You know, here's the thing. There are bigger mysteries beyond this. I know it doesn't seem like it. I know that for people that have been researching and the experiencers, it seems like this is the mother load of experience. But we're, if you use the term ascension properly, and that doesn't mean this, uh, look, you can go sideways and ascend because dimensionally we shift That's all true. the time. That's true. Yeah, I have, an, I have an opinion on the word ascension as well. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a trigger word, but we'll use it because it's, it's a comfortable reference point. My point being that we came into this, in the materiality, we came into the matrix the world of contrast both to create within this 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 field and to resolve the energetic issues that we had accumulated going through karma and endless lifetimes and it right. feels like you're trapped it does i get that and i feel like that a lot of times and, and it's perplexity and anxiety and a fair amount of pain but the truth of the matter is that on some level it's like everything else when we choose to own something, when we take responsibility for it, 
we stop becoming victimized by it. Exactly. And and that's, that was my message earlier to, to look at it, assert it, realize it, process it, heal it and let it go. That's what I did. And I cannot tell you how much more my life is at peace now by doing that. I went through the programs like Corey Good speaks of. Yet it was a simulation. I acknowledge that it was just an alternate reality. It was a simulation. And, I, and, and I'm done with it now. Because in my opinion, I think people have contracts, right? But that's my reality. Like, I feel like I'm done with that reality, you know? Because I, I've looked at it, I've processed it, and I've healed it. You're not going to believe this. My na- na- neighbor just fired up a leaf blower, <laughs> which, I'm trying, which I'm trying to screen out right now. I was switching my okay, mic so that that's it's not, not, if that's not. If that's not synchronistic, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it really is. So is there anything we left on the table? Is there anything we didn't discuss? Um, Because I'm still enjoying the lavender here. Me too. Dude, I'm so, you know, you know, in order to continue the last, like, 10, 15 minutes, I broke my freaking rule, did not let the baby cry, and came in here and was breastfeeding her. Oh. And I had the phone on mute while she was screaming her ass off. <laughs> wow. And I did it, dude, and I'm so There concerned. you go, folks. The, the suckling of a small child but no, live on radio. That, but she said, no, it was, yeah. Yeah. Like, I would have added her. it, but there's nothing to add. I hear her. So yeah. we can continue the ending if that was that horrible of an ending. That wasn't horrible. There's nothing horrible about I think, it. Honestly, I think it was honest and awesome. Yeah, I do too. Like, do you know how many women or girls are sitting there listening to this, being like, "I wish you could just stay home and breastfeed instead of sending my kid to daycare with breast milk." Yeah, we we need to take back our maternity and paternity and stop letting the nanny state suckle our yeah, children. I see, yeah, like I see my fiance is suffering so much because he's not here like I am, you know. And it's just like, dude, like, I feel bad for him. But it's not only that. He's, he's the one who's taken on his generational shit, you know? And he doesn't even realize it. Like, that's the thing. So there you go. The sound of a, a nursing baby in the background and um, the sound of a, an infant humanity waking up. What's that now? I said the sound of an uh, of an infant humanity waking up. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was very that was a very awakening message. It was. That was a very peaceful, not shoving shit down your fucking throat. Oh damn! Every time we get on here, oh what's going on? Oh what's up? Go ahead and what is the point of this? So before we close, I'm actually still recording, but I'll edit some of this. I want to say thank you, Lisa Cooper, for being on. Well, Randy, honestly, I I want to thank you for all of your hard work. Um, You have been been just doing your thing and, and just not because you wanted to, trust me. There's many mornings I know you'd want to sleep in and just chill. <laughs> um, same here. Um, yet you still keep pushing through and you still keep just trying to benefit humanity. And the same thing I'm trying to do. And hopefully um, many others are. I, I see that they are. I feel that they are. Yeah. And I hope that they don't give up. Because in this world, it is, it's uh, yeah. giving yeah. up is... Can it's, be easy. The uh, the Q line is is filling up here as we go into 2020, and I, it's a big time. And these are the kind of messages I want to put out. I want to encourage people. We and, have to, uh, dude. We, I mean, you have to because if you think 2019 was hard, I mean, if you're if you're not working at healing yourself and really working on bettering yourself, 
You think 2018 was bad? You think 2019 was bad? 2020 is going to be worse for you. This is the cosmic hey, wheel of fortune, other, baby. Other year you have ever had. Come on down. Way worse than any other year you know, that you've ever had if you're not working on correcting things and really working on yourself, mainly. Yeah. Because our inner world, like, directly reflects onto and affects every single other world around us, including human beings, uh, nature, uh, extraterrestrials, the globe, it, like everything, <laughs> everything. It, like, it, it's it. like, for example, when you see a raindrop yep. create, create a tsunami, you'll think about that. You know what I mean? One raindrop. Yep. One raindrop. If they didn't have those last one or ten raindrops, it would not have been a tsunami. One, think about that. One raindrop is the entirety of the tsunami. Exactly. There you it, go. It, it, you know, when, when you drop one raindrop of positive consciousness, consciousness, it's going to ripple like out into the ocean and it's going to calm calm the ocean and sort of excite it and make it crazy. So let's think about just being calm and peaceful <laughs> and healing things and correcting things instead of remaining in this mind state of negativity and oh the world's so bad and victim mind state and oh we didn't get to do what we wanted to do today because we had to work or because we just felt sad and depressed. You've you got a roof over your house, you got food to eat, you've got like one person that speaks to you, like you're doing okay. Yeah, yeah. With water. No, you take. Like you're blessed, you know. Stop taking shit for granted, and that's one thing that society has programmed us to do. The simulation. To want shit. more. To have want more. Said, have said, we have just said, had this conversation here last yeah. night. Yeah, we're trained right. to want right. more. The society's like, oh, be ungrateful. Like you could always have more. You could always have more. You could always have more. And that's so, why I'm so tired of these spiritual memes. You know, it's like, oh, do this, do that. Like, it's old news. Like, it's not about seeing it. It's about taking action, you know, and actually doing it. Yep. <clears throat> so, um, I think that's going to wrap it for this one, um, I guess, Lindsay Hooper. And um, blessings to you and your child, dear one. Thanks for the energy. Thanks for... I keep saying the lavender because I'm still smelling it. People don't. We did an induction coming in, and, and when it, what came up was both color and scent of lavender. It's amazing. Yeah. And I'm actually tucking her in right now. Cool. She's she's kind of been with us the whole time. And yeah, this, uh, the lavender is, is definitely an essential color and essence that I think everyone could benefit from in calling yeah. in for sure. Yeah, there you go. All right, guys. That's it for now. This is Off Planet Radio. My guest, Lindsay Hooper. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you. Go find it. We love you. This is Off Planet Radio. 